Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing Dionysus. Uh, Dio is a hero that I haven't really played too much lately, but uh, I decided to dip back in and had a, had a pretty good one here. Uh, we start off with a cat. I like starting with the cat. I mean, it's just a decent amount of stats. Usually it's going to get you a tie um, almost no matter what your opponent's doing on turn one, barring something crazy. Um, I considered locking the demon deal there, but uh, I don't think we want to take two damage just for a shot at potentially getting uh, like another spell or uh, or an item. Um, with makeshift shield being gone from the pool, I'm definitely less uh, less excited about demons deals on uh, turns with like the early turns with uh, with even numbered gold. The odd numbered gold, of course, you do get uh, do get an extra unit. I, mean, I guess that's only only turn two with three gold. Or I guess turn turn three as well, or turn four with uh, with five gold as well. Uh, Demon's deal is still really nice, but um, I will of course cast it if there's a one cost item in the shop. Being able to bank that gold for later is usually worth the two damage, and just adding like one extra stat to your board can matter in these early turns. Um, we did we did get our our Dio hero power did hit a uh, a fox there, so getting a golden fox on three point oh is super super good. Um, basically, uh. I mean, it's going to get like I think it's plus four, plus two uh, per uh, per slay, and also has a decent stat line to begin with. Um, we're also going to get a golden Romeo here. We're we're down we're we're on four characters right now, which is not exactly ideal. We do want to fill out our board a little bit, but um, we are set up pretty well for success, I think, with the golden fox scaling and uh, the golden Romeo having such high upside with uh, with Juliet. But we do find a new U, and I immediately just fire it off on the uh, Romeo. It's possible it was probably better to uh, to hit the uh, the fox because the fox is um, gonna fall off at some point. Whereas Romeo, uh, you get a lot of stats if you find a Juliet. But we do turn it turn it into a red fluff, a golden red fluff, uh, and find a green fluff in the next shop. So uh, I think that's a sign. We did lock the uh, lock the sheep there, and uh, and I mean I figured I figured locking the sheep is just really good because two gold for like a pretty decent amount of stats is just really good value. We do miss out on seeing one level four shop, but I think that was okay. And it ended up being working out perfectly for us as we saw another red and another green fluff. And uh, and we find another sheep here. So we're off, got a great fluff uh, set up going on. Throw the Grimm's Twist onto the uh, the fox there as uh, the scaling is kind of starting to to fall off already. And turning it into a ranged character is uh, is definitely much better than uh, than the fox, I think. Especially, especially since it doesn't look like we're going to be like heading into a, a like a full on slay direction, anyways. Um, there was a green green fluff triple uh, in that last shot, but I decided not to lock it just in case we didn't win that fight and get the extra XP. I wanted to see at least one level five shop. I mean, we want to we want to give ourselves a chance to see a uh, a purple fluff. I mean, we did get the XP, so we get to just roll down anyways. But um, yeah, that's why I just didn't bother with the triple anyhow. Not that level three treasures aren't uh, aren't good. And it's just more, definitely more worth it to uh, to see at least one level five shop. Unfortunately, we don't see any purple fluffs. I do end up taking a narc. There are a couple level five treasures that I wouldn't mind, and I, with five gold left, I just really wanted to uh, to at least make or make sure I bought a five on this turn rather than uh, just rolling down and finding nothing, which uh, which can be a reality of when you're playing fluffs, or you can just hit another uh, another do powered golden red fluff. So we got two golden red fluffs and a couple of greens as well here. Um, so uh, yeah, like I said, we're in a in a pretty good fluff spot here. Combat works out pretty well here. We uh, this uh, this this uh, acolyte I think has been doing uh, doing pretty well, making sure that uh, that we keep our health total high while we're scaling our fluffs, and we do find our purple fluff finally. There's also a uh, a triple for our uh, our sheep, which is like it's not great, but but it's fine. And I think we're we're finally out of, with now we have the unyielding purple fluff. We're finally out of the acolyte. Uh, it's not like it's growing anymore. So just having uh having everything on the board like have just like a big chunk of stats on it, I think is uh is nice. Manage a tie there. Um, also, we we did pick up the bottled ship from the uh, from the sheep, so I think it ended up being a pretty valuable triple. The bottled ship, especially later, is uh, is pretty good. Um, just having like that one extra shot to uh, to see the treasure you really want, I think, is pretty important, especially in a game that has uh, has so many specific things, like so many spe very specific comps. Um, like like you, there's definitely like a, a lot of like best in best in slot treasures 
uh, as opposed to like uh, like in 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 SBB, there was uh, there's a lot of different configurations you could go with. So I think bottled treasure is a uh, or bottled ship is a uh, is just very valuable later. Um, we get to look at four fives. Unfortunately, we don't find the one we want. The one we want is divine messenger, of course, to uh, get all our get our our purple fluff uh, affecting our entire front row. Uh, we do get to triple our purple fluff, and uh, and we do find our divine uh, messenger though. We also took a philosopher's stone. So like any uh, any new purple fluff, or if we find a blue fluff relatively early on uh, on six, then uh, we can slot that into uh, into slot seven, and and that'll be very good for us. Unfortunately, we don't get to lose our uh, our green fluff there. We don't get quite get max scaling, but pretty good overall. We're gonna take a hero change. Uh, as yeah, I think we're pretty much done with the Dionysus buff. I mean, having it hit like a, another purple fluff or. Uh, or a blue fluff would be really nice, and I did see a purple fluff that we just rolled past. Honestly, I, I think I was I was very sleep deprived during this uh, during recording this. This is offline, but uh, I was in a bit of a bout of an insomnia, so I did miss quite a bit of fluffs. After like watching it back while editing, there's a lot of moments where I was like, "Oh, I should have taken that. Oh, should have taken that. Oh, missed that." <laughs> so, uh, so I do see them. So you don't you don't have to roast me in the comments about it. Um, we do find a blue fluff though, uh, and we did roll past another blue fluff right before finding this triple. Um, we are going to take the the triple, of course, and for this exact reason, we're going to find a uh, a treasure map here. That was exactly the treasure that we wanted on four. Pretty much everything else is just uh, is just an instant skip. Um, but yeah, we did get one blue fluff, so we've got the uh, the sleighs sleighs going as well, uh, as well as we've got our. Uh, our double double purple fluff with the upgraded Merlin with the Philosopher's Stone, um, providing a ton of scaling for us. And there's another Merlin and another Merlin as we're going to take it and pop our treasure map here. And yeah, we're just going to jam the Aladdin's Lamp. We've got the Savitri Revive Charge. We're pretty healthy. Uh, we're very, very likely to uh, to see this level 8 treasure. So uh, yeah, I think, I think the thing we want most out of this level 8 treasure is definitely Wish for Life. Um, because I'm pretty sure that would just... Uh, Basically, give everything in our shop all these uh, all these fluff stats. Uh, we do lose to a pretty large stealth board. They're getting very large very quickly, so that's a little bit scary. Uh, stealth is definitely uh, definitely has a pretty good matchup against us if they can grow. They, I mean, if they just slot in a giant fire mage, then it's a pretty easy three for one. We don't really have a lot of ways to uh, to combat that. If we have to play a chair, that does reduce the overall power of our board quite a bit, losing an entire fluff worth of stats. So. We don't necessarily want to have to do that, but um, it's possible we might ha end up having to. We make pretty short work of this uh, starboard. Unfortunately, they're, they're a little bit too small to even knock uh, knock out a bunch of our front line. Uh, we got our level 8 treasure selection. Uh, Wish for Brilliance is, of course, a lot of fun. Casting spells 14 times is great. Um, Wish for Infinity is pretty much unplayable. Um, and yeah, we're just going to take the uh, the end of the rainbow here. We're just going to get a whole thousand gold turn and uh, see how many fluffs we can buy. Fluffs and blackbeards. We want to fill out our bench now with uh, with fluffs and uh, and make these blackbeards as big as possible to hopefully be able to uh, go over top of the stealth board. Unfortunately, we do get hit by a pegamorph here, losing uh, losing one of our one of our golden fluffs or our one golden golden purple fluff here. I did speed up the turn, which is like, I mean, usually I keep it around like two point two, between 2.5 and, and 3, or 2.2 and 3, um, just for the purpose of uh, making combats watchable on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I just I jacked it up be, be to, uh, <laughs> to give myself a little bit more time with the uh, end of the rainbow. And like I said, I missed a lot of fluffs here, so uh, I do see them. <laughs> uh, we're going to take it, we're going to change here, get a hero mask here, and we're going to get a Sunday Ada. That's really nice. It's going to give us a, uh, an ascendance on something. Um, probably just going to be on this Blackbeard, to be honest. Like we just want to get as many uh, as many Blackbeards as we can on, or ready to uh, to transition onto the uh, onto the board. We're going to throw the golden one up there. Just uh, just a ton of stats right now. I mean, we we still need to uh, to add one more, at least one more fluff to our bench, and we do. We're finally out of this Merlin. I think we're we're kind of past the scaling now that we're in top two. We have to find a way to uh, to beat the, this stealth board. And yeah, it looks like they've uh, they haven't added a fire mage yet. They they just have the mat there in uh, in slot one. And we do get a tie here. 
But if uh, if they once they put that uh, the fire mage there, we are in trouble for sure. And without, I mean, without the Merlin, we are we are kind of we're not really scaling as much. So, um, but I think we have we had to make that we still had to had to dump it just to to get as many stats on the board as possible. Um, there's another uh, another black beard which we have to sell something for, and I make the pretty big mistake selling the purple fluff. Like the purple fluff has unyielding, so I'm not really sure why I decided to sell that over uh, over a red fluff. And there's a there's an upgrade for our uh, for our black beard. We're not going to play all the black beards here. I want to do a little bit of scaling if we can. Like we still want to increase the size of these black beards, and yeah, there's the there's the fire mage, and it just immediately three for ones us, and we get dropped. Uh, we get dropped by quite a bit. Um, we do get a level six treasure, and we're gonna take a drum roll. So Blackbeard's ability is an entrance ability, so this drum roll is gonna double the size of them, which is absolutely massive. Because they were they were almost big enough to uh, like the the break point was I think like uh, they were they were just trading with them. Uh, um, they were just trading with uh, with their stealth characters with the Blackbeards, so um, the double might might allow us to uh, to get a get a couple of um, a couple of value trades, anyways. And we, we I did skip out on one uh, purple fluff because we had like eight gold or something, and I really want to find more Blackbeards. Like more Blackbeards is how we get stronger at this point. Um, we do win that fight thanks to those huge Blackbeards, and we move them to the back and then put our un unyielding fluffs up front. Just so like they get kind of free attacks, like they, they can potentially uh, value trade with things. Like if they attack into something, of course they're not going to die, and then uh, hopefully they're going to be able to uh, trade into something that attacks into them. I considered selling the purple fluff for some reason, and then I realized, wait, this has unyielding. I should I should just play that. Um, like we're done with scaling. I think this this blue fluff can uh, can sit on the bench. There's a, that's an entrance rune. And I wanted to put it on one of these black beards, but I wasn't sure if selling one of the fluffs for it was worth it, because that would reduce the size of the black beards overall. It would make one of them bigger, but the other one would shrink. And uh, I mean, they're scaling every turn, so I just end up ended up chickening out and uh, and just rolling to try and find more black beards, which we did not find, unfortunately. All right, once again. Uh, we do pretty well. Like the the fact that they didn't actually kill our uh, our purple fluff with the uh, with the initial fire mage attack actually shows that we were uh, like we were decently sized there. Um, and of course, like them just them not getting the three for one is the is the big deal here. That's um, that's what those black beards in the back uh, were doing for us. Losing the red fluff is probably fine, but uh, but yeah. Um. Anyways, there we go. That was a big fluff game. It was a big mistake riddled fluff game. Definitely not my best uh my best grail turn or end of the rainbow turn, if you will. Um But yeah, let me know if you enjoyed that. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff I'm supposed to tell you to do. Um also tournament is happening in uh I think it's six days. They have we have uh we have concrete uh concrete details in the Discord uh in case you're interested. Uh let me know if you've qualified for the tournament or if you're excited for it or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to play in it anyways, and I hope to see some of you there. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.